Stepping up to the couch, it's Brian, who led the league last season in cracked screens. But with his new athletic case, it looks like that won't be the case. <laughs> Touchdown, Brian! Oh boy, okay. I am not a very passionate person, or at least in the terms of YouTube. I don't do that bullshit high energy stuff that so many other YouTubers do. I don't start off every video with, Hey guys, it's another generic fuckboy here with another boring ass challenge video. That's not my thing. I don't do that shit. Which is funny, in the script these are all caps because that's how they talk. I don't talk like that. And I definitely don't raise my voice, but that probably won't be the case for this video. Because this motherfucker Paul Pierce, oh this motherfucker Paul Pierce. No, not this Paul Pierce. Johnson, he looks at the clock. Johnson, wow. oh, oh, fix oh, oh, Pierce oh, oh, and hits! This Paul Pierce. But he, we're just getting a taste of him. I'm like... You know, I'm tired of getting the taste of them. I want the whole load. Now, the reason I was pushed to the edge to make this video was Paul Pierce had the audacity to say this. All right, but tail of the tape, both NBA Finals MVP. You have him in career points. He's got more playoff points. You are a more clutch shooter overall. He's got more playoff points. Paul, riddle me this. Who's the better NBA player? That's easy. I can say that off the bat. That's me. <laughs> if you give me Shaq, if you give me LeBron, they did. They called and, a big and, three. And, and, and yeah, I, we got that late, but like early in my career. If I you, mean, what are you if doing? If you give right me now? these guys early in my career. What, well, let me was, ask you this: What would have been a perfect time for you, Paul? Let's make sure we get this right. When I was 24 years old. Okay. You give me Shaq. When I'm 24, 25, you give me LeBron and Bosh. I'd be sitting on five or six championships, easy. Now, don't worry, this video will not be just based off of that clip. It is merely just the inspiration for me finally making this video. This clip will not be the only thing in the video, but it makes me want to talk about two different things. One, how bad of an analyst Paul Pierce is, and two, how much disrespect Dwayne Wade has gotten lately. Most of this video will be about Pierce, but I'm also going to talk about Dwayne Wade for a good bit here. I hope you don't mind. Roll the intro. Rebound. Save. Absolutely incredibly Okay, now if Paul Pierce had just simply said that he thought he was a better player than Dwayne Wade, I wouldn't have made this video. Now don't get me wrong, that's a ridiculous opinion for anyone else to have, but Paul Pierce is allowed to be biased about Paul Pierce. He was an athlete and a competitor. They tend to have egos. It's understandable, though I don't have LeBron as the GOAT. I don't hate him for saying that he thought he was. I mean, I don't agree, but I, whatever. I would expect LeBron to be biased about himself. It's not a big deal. However, Paul Pierce's statement that if you gave me Shaq and LeBron and Bosh, I'd be sitting on five or six championships. That statement is ridiculous for two reasons. One, Pierce thinks he's better than Dwayne Wade, but again, I did forgive that. But two, it implies that Wade could have or should have won more championships than he did, and that it was his fault that the big three only won two championships. And it implies that Wade had an insane amount of help throughout his career. Now, I will give him the big three days. They had fucking LeBron James. Once you're no longer the best player on your team, you definitely had a lot of help. But the days with Shaq? Nah, man. Shaq wasn't that great in Miami. He was good, but he wasn't Shaq Shaq. He was Shaq, but he wasn't Shaq. You know what I mean? Let's look back at some numbers from the 2006 NBA Finals. A series that by itself to me and to most people puts Dwayne Wade over Paul Pierce. In 2006, Dwayne Wade, 34.7 points per game, 7.8 rebounds per game, 3.8 assists, 2.7 steals, and one block on 47% shooting. Antoine Walker was next in line in points per game with 13.8 and 5.5 rebounds, shooting 39%. Shaquille O'Neal was just behind 
behind him with 13.7 points, 10.3 rebounds, 2.8 assists, and 0.8 blocks on 60% shooting. You want to know who not too long ago put up similar stats to Shaq in a final series? A decade later in the 2016 finals. Tristan Thompson put up 10.3 points, 10.1 rebounds, and 0.9 blocks on 64% shooting. Basically add 3 points per game to Tristan Thompson's 2016 final stats, and you have Shaquille O'Neal in 2006. Now would you have the audacity to claim that Tristan Thompson was pivotal in LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers winning the 2016 championship? No, he certainly helped, but those are top tier role player stats. Shaq was a role player in the 2006 finals. I hate to use the word carried because of how overused it is, but Dwayne Wade without a doubt carried that Heat team to a championship. Now if we're talking about the big three days, in 2011, Wade was pretty much the only reason they weren't fucking swept. In 2011, LeBron as we know had his epic collapse, and because of that, both Wade's great performance and Chris Bosh's underperformance gets thrown under the rug. Bosh averaged a very solid 18-7, and 7, but he shot 41% in the process. Wade averaged 26.5 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, and 1.5 and steals and blocks on 55% shooting. Fantastic stats. Dwayne Wade was not the reason that the Miami Heat lost in 2011. Add Paul Pierce into that situation at age 24 like he said, and the outcome is still the same. In 2014, Wade was basically playing on one leg, so he only averaged 15 a game on 44% shooting. Let's say 24-year-old Paul Pierce could have averaged 25 a game instead of 15. In that case, that extra 10 points per game doesn't matter, because the Heat lost by, on average, 18 points per game in that year's finals. The difference in that series, if you swapped the two, which, by the way, comparing a 24-year-old Pierce to a 32-year-old injured Dwayne Wade is a tad bit unfair, the difference would be losing by 8 points per game instead of 18. Dwayne Wade did about as much as he could have with what he was given, so that argument is just fucking stupid on Pierce's part. He's made All-NBA first team twice, Paul hasn't done it, he made all NBA eight times to your four. Ooh. He's made all defensive team three times to your zero. Ooh, zero. That's rough. He's won one scoring title. You weren't able to win a scoring title. That's too bad. He has three rings. You have one ring. Ooh, three is bigger than one. With Wade out of the way, since we are talking about Pierce talking about how great he was, let's look at some other cases of arrogance. He said he pioneered the step back, said he was LeBron's biggest rival. He was certainly up there, but I'd argue that KD, Curry, and the Warriors as a whole are higher on that list. Even Paul George is probably up there. He said the Boston Celtics Big Three, with all of them in their prime, was better than the Miami Heat Big Three all in their prime, which is bullshit. He also said this shit. So I ask you, is Clay a better wing shooter than you were in yes. your prime? What's your accent, Paul? <laughs> what, is he a better wing shooter? It's okay, you can say yeah. I'm gonna say no. <laughs> because this is why. In clutch situations. Why are you starting like that? <laughs> it was money in the bank. He's, you haven't seen a, Clay in these situations quite okay. a bit. You want they me don't to tell go you this? to you him. Let me tell you what it is. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, you got Clay. If you got Clay down the stretch and you got me down the stretch, who you want shooting that three? Oof. Clutch shooting isn't all that matters for shooting. This is something outside of Paul Pierce that I can't stand. The idea that the last shot of the game is all that really matters. Maybe Paul was a better clutch three-point shooter, but the guy that's a better shooter for 99% of the game is the better shooter, period. Paul Pierce loves to talk himself up like he was all that and a bag of fucking Lay's Classic chips. But was he though? Is he though? For his career, Pierce was a 19 point per game scorer. When he hit his prime at age 23 to age 29 before KG and Pierce came over and his stats dipped, he averaged 25, 7, and 4 on 56% true shooting percentage. Now, don't get me wrong, those are some damn good numbers. They remind me of Damian Lillard, Jimmy Butler, Paul George minus the defense, 
defense. Kawhi Leonard minus the defense. DeMar DeRozan. Like, those are good numbers, but they're not top three shooting guard and top 20 player of all time numbers. Paul Pierce was a dime a dozen player, if we're being honest. He didn't do anything different. He didn't put up crazy stats. He didn't win much of anything until KG and Ray Allen came over. He didn't change the game in any way. Paul Pierce is basically a less athletic, worse defensive version of Paul George, which is a good player, but not top tier. He was in a tier below Tracy McGrady, Vince Carter, and Carmelo Anthony. The only thing he has on those guys is a ring where he arguably probably shouldn't have been finals MVP over Ray Allen, who shot way better from the field. Put any of Vince, T-Mac, or Melo on the 08 Celtics, since he seems to want to play this put me here game and the result is the same but again he's allowed to feel that he's better than he is and even say it but when you're attacking someone else's legacy and constantly talking yourself up like some fucking wizard of basketball that's when you're pushing it if you're going to be an analyst be an analyst paul not a salty old man with an inflated ego who cannot stop talking about himself. If you have been on this channel for a bit, you would know that I hate sports media as a whole because these dudes are paid to have ridiculous takes so that they can just say shit that they want and get more clout and a thicker wallet. But Pierce doesn't say outrageous shit for the sake of money. He does it out of spite and for the sake of attention because he thought he was Kobe and Draymond Green exposed how untrue that was. They don't love you like that, Pierce, and they never will. And if you want people to love you like that, spiting an NBA legend isn't the way to do it. Straight. Oh, the chasing Warriors. that farewell tour, they don't love you Old like Warriors. that. By 17, you can't no by 46, is that 144.98? Victory here in, in Oakland. Now ironically, outside of him talking about himself, I haven't found a lot of bad clips of Pierce as an analyst, there's a few dumb things here or there, but the problem is that half of the things that he ends up saying are about himself. The clips that Pierce will forever be known for, as an analyst, will be him saying that he's a better shooter than Klay Thompson, saying he pioneered the step back, that he is better than Dwayne Wade. Paul Pierce is an awful, analyst. I want to give a quick shout out to B Souls for starting this whole trend of calling out NBA media personalities. He's done some great videos exposing some trash analysts. And I made a video about NBA media as a whole and why I thought it's just an egregious thing. And finally, one quick shout out that I'm going to be doing for a while, the Goatmentary. If you don't know what that is, it is a four-part docu-series that I released this past week or two weeks, whenever this comes out. Uh, it's two and a half hours long in total, and it's a documentary about the greatest of all time debate. I spent over a year making it, and I would really appreciate it if you would check it out. That's the end of this video. Please be sure to like and subscribe for more NBA content like this.